Hey guys, welcome back to the Phil Studio. I know it's been a while now, but I'll tell you, I just got this new job opportunity and it's in the robotic world, so I couldn't refuse the offer. So there's big change coming soon for me and I hope it's for the best. I'm also glad to announce that it's the beginning of season three. And so I followed the professional advices and decided to comb my hair, uh, shave and dress well. All that to get more views. And for those who don't know yet, Season 3 is all about designing a good but basic dual polarity power supply. I know the trend may be to the switching supply right now, but I also think these switching supply are more complex and requires much more care to design. So we will stick with the linear supply. So this tutorial will be presented in four parts and we will go step by step in the design and I'll be explaining uh, each section of the supply. The final project will be housed in an aluminum casing and will provide plus 15 and minus 15 volt at around 2 amp depending on what parts and regulator you choose. Okay, let's get started. So when designing a power supply we have no other choice than working with the frightening 100 volt AC, the live powers that come out of your wall. And if you're European it's 240. First of all we will draw this voltage source on the board. In our design, we will use the ground, the third pin, which is the ground. If some of you don't have the ground, I suggest you don't try anything reckless. I don't want to be responsible for any damage or even death. A little bit curious right now, and we would like to know what is the actual voltage uh, coming out from the wall. We say it's 120 or 240, but it's never really the case. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. So if you have your voltmeter, put it in the volt AC mode. And if you have the auto scale, just plug this into your wall outlet or put it in the range of the 200 or 500, something like that. We have 120.7, so we, but you don't have to do this in order to, to build or design the power supply. It's just because I'm curious and I wanted to know what was the real voltage out of the wall. So in designing a power supply, the first step we, we want to take is its protection. Get the goddamn fuse right here. Where do we put the fuse? On the side of the live. The live also is the black wire. And never put your fuse in parallel with the live and the neutral. The neutral usually is the, um, the white wire. So you put your fuse in series with the live power. In order to do that, you will need a a high EC cable, which is a standard with when working with AC power. The black wire will be the live. This is where you have your voltage, your live power source, so also called hot. And you know why it's hot? Because when you touch it, you get zapped. The white wire right here, it's called the neutral. This is where your voltage source will come back when the circuit is closed. The green one is called the ground, and it's supposed to be ground to the physical earth of your building unless you have a really old house or an old-fashioned electrical wiring. And if it's your case, call an electrician right away. And about the fuse, we'll start with a 2 amp fuse, a fast blow. And as usual, I will post the um, material list in the description of the video and a link to some documentation and stuff like that. But right now, we have a voltage source, a protection, and what next? Since it's a bench power supply, I think you may want to have a power switch to turn it on and off. I'm going to tell you later what kind of switch you can use. So far, we haven't modified anything to the signal. It's still looking like a 60 Hertz or 50 Hertz wave signal with the same voltage since it hasn't passed into some uh, modifying component. Since we want to work with plus 15 and minus 15 volts something in the range I think 120 volt it's a little bit overrated 
to get down to this voltage so we will use this special part called a transformer the transformer is hiding a pretty nice secret inside of it and overall it's just two coil of wire isolated by a metal coil sometimes it's just air gap the function of the transformer is to transfer electrical voltage through electromagnetic induction and it won't work with DC power so that's why it's perfect to step down or big life power to something smaller. So we will use a step down transformer. So like I said it's just two coil of wires isolated with some metal spacers or sometimes air gap. You want to take the primary and step it down to something smaller and here you can see there is something special with this transformer uh, because you have a center tap so you start with two two connection at the primary and at the secondary you will end with three connection and the center tap is really important if you want to get uh, this positive voltage and this negative voltage we will simulate a ground in the center here so we have our input which is primary and output so one of these end will provide the positive supply and the other end the negative supply and the center tap will be just the ground the, the zero of the circuit so for those of you who want to know what a transfer will look like um, it's this part so here you have the two wire for the live and the neutral and it won't really matter what polarity you put it just make sure your fuse is on the live side so this is the primary when you have where you have two wire and this is the secondary where you have the three wire here you can see the green one is the center tap so it's the one that will simulate the ground and these will be the positive and the negative maybe this one is a little bit small uh, to get some 15 volt dc so i suggest you get a, a bigger one i will post some spec about transfer in the description so you may choose well your parts what have we achieved so far we started with a live power and we went into a fuse a two amp fuse to protect our circuit in case of short or just overdriving and then we have this power switch to power on the circuit and power it off when you don't use it and then the signal is going into this transformer and the circuit is closed with the neutral which is going to the other end of the transformer so far we're there with our 120 volt and we step it down to something like 20 30 volt depending on what kind of transformer you take because we have a center tap we will step it down to two exact same voltage since the coil here is separated in two you may have 12 volt here 12 volt here or 24 24 and i suggest when you choose your transformer go with something around 146 um, it will give you about uh, 20 volt ac and 20 volt ac which is something pretty good to work with and get down to a 15 volt dc so right now we're still having some ac power but it's been stepped down and it's protected and it's controlled so don't build the circuit yet we're just designing the schematic next episode we will work with more transformation of for 60 hertz wave uh, form see you mm -hmm.